This video is to help explain the insulated metal panel, or IMP, installation process for series structures. This particular project is a Vesta kit house, but most elements of the installation are the same for series greenhouses as well. The Vesta has 4 inch R32 wall panels and 6 inch R48 roof panels. They are finished with 26 gauge metal on the interior of the panels painted white and 26 gauge metal on the exterior in the color and texture of your choice. In this video, the clients chose our standard Mesa panel with a custom exterior color. This is the final panel being installed on the north wall of the Vesta. The first step before installing each panel is to caulk the interlocking seam of the panel. The battery powered caulk gun is massively helpful during the imp install process. The panels aren't very heavy, but they can be awkward because of their size. As this is an end panel, make sure to add caulk to the vertical framing column where the panel will end. All panels get caulk along the top and bottom edge of the framing to create a good weatherproof seal. Installing panels is relatively straightforward. It's important to have someone up high as well as low to apply even pressure to the panel as you slide it into its final position. Check the reveal or gap between the newly installed panel and the previous panel to make sure it's consistent from top to bottom. Because this is an end panel, it receives screws along the bottom and vertically on the edge, which will all be covered by trim pieces to cover the screw heads. Around the edges of the panels, we do through screws from the exterior of the panel through the panel into the frame. Those will be covered by a flashing piece, but that is the bottom edges, that is the, the vertical sides, and that's also along the top of the panels. Every other seam, the screws are hidden in the lap connection. So the wall has no screws anywhere along it that will be visible. Here you can see how the panels come from the factory. These are the four inch wall panels with insulation value of R32. The contractors have set up a cutting table next to the stack so they can easily move the panels over for cutting as needed. They're using a seven and a quarter inch worm drive with a metal blade for cutting the panels. Both sides of the panels have a thin protective plastic sheet on them. It's important to remember to remove this as it can be very difficult to remove once the panels are installed. This is the first panel to be installed on the west wall. For all starting panels, snap a line and cut off one of the edges as the drawing dictates to have a straight cut to start the new wall segment. Here we are cutting the exterior side of the panel first. You can see how deep the cut goes. So then we flip the panel, snap another line on the interior side, and finish the cut. At the top of the panel, we mark and cut both sides again to match the roof angle. Each panel gets caulked in the seam before install, so when you slide the next panel into place there is caulk to help seal the connection. You can do this while the panel is still on the ground or once installed, but it's easier to do while the panel is laying flat. This is the first panel of the west wall that we watched being cut earlier getting installed. The vertical column of the house has been caulked and so have the upper and lower horizontal framing of the wall to create an airtight connection on three sides of the panel. Once the panel is in place, use the provided brackets and screws to attach the panel at the lap condition to the horizontal framing members. When the next panel gets installed, these brackets will be completely covered and not visible. 
You can also see here the trim, which comes with the kit. It caps the inside metal panels. Here, it's all riveted, as you can see the rivets. There is a drip edge that keeps water off of it, and then a finished piece of flashing that slips in. And it's all cocked beneath for a really nice look that is relatively easy to install. Trim installation is relatively easy. You cut the trim to the length needed, place it and pre-drill where the rivets will be used. Then set the rivet and you are done. Rivets are supplied to match the color of the trim. These are the roof panels, which are six inches thick and have an R value of 48. They have a high rib profile, so they are easy to tell apart from the wall panels. The roof panels, like the wall panels, have a plastic film on both sides, which you see here being removed before the panels are lifted to the roof. Installing the roof is very similar to installing the walls with a few key differences. Instead of an interlocking connection, there is a high rib overlap, which is an overlapping piece of metal from one panel to the next, sealed with butyl tape. Installing the roof is relatively quick and easy. This installation took a total of 3 hours and 15 minutes, including crane time and setting the panels. Bump. You can see the overlapping high rib cover the butyl tape and the high rib of the previously installed panel. Make sure the panel is lined up well at the high and low eaves and compress the overlapped high rib onto the butyl tape to ensure a tight fit. Next, using the provided 10 inch screws and saddle brackets, follow your provided drawings and connect the panel to the roof structure. For this project, we installed one low bracket and one high bracket until all of the roof panels were installed. Then we went back and finalized the screw and bracket installation. The roof panels come prepped for gutters from the factory. As you see here, the white side, which is the underside of the panel when installed, is already cut and so is the foam. To finalize the gutter preparation, you need to cut the foam from what is actually the top of the metal panel, so you can remove this entire piece but leave the top metal long, which allows the gutter to slip into this small overhang you have just created. For the Vesta kit house, we have designed the south facing roof overhang to create shade over the upper windows during summer to keep the house cool while allowing sunlight into the house during the winter when we want the sun to help heat the house. The rear overhang is on the north side of the house which doesn't get direct sunlight. So the overhang on this side of the house is for style, a connection point for the gutter and to keep precipitation off the north wall of the house. We're back on the roof prepping for the next panel. Here we are laying down the butyl tape, sticking the underside of the tape to the installed panel on the high rib where the new panel will overlap it. While the butyl tape goes down, we also caulk the panel seam that will connect to the next panel as well as along the frame of the roof edges where the panel will contact the roof framing. All of this helps to create an air and watertight connection between the roofing panels and the frame of the house. Peel the paper protective layer off the top side of the butyl tape when you are ready to set the next panel. So we have butyl tape run on the rib, a bead of caulk along the south eave, another bead of caulk at the north eave, and we're ready for the second to last roof panel. One last bump to pop the new panel over the high rib and butyl tape of the already set panel. The newly installed roof panel is now ready for saddle washers and 10 inch screws through the panel into the roof purlins. Here is the final panel being installed on the west side of the Vesta. Overall the crane was on site for just over 3 hours. 
The roof now has its finished metal roofing installed, insulation installed, and depending on your interior style preferences, the interior ceiling could be considered complete as well. It's important to consider the amount of labor, which equals cost, that is saved with the speed of this installation. We will continue to film and update you as the build progresses. Thanks so much for watching.